right, we've got Bam Adebayo getting set in the heat winner circle. He had 20 points and 12 rebounds tonight. He did it in just 28 minutes. He also had three steals and two blocks. Bam Adebayo, by the way, three steals or more in four of the last five games. Bam Adebayo, congratulations. A, a homecoming victory <laughs> for you in your, in your home state of, of North Carolina. Yep. And, and you guys fought through some early shooting struggles. You yourself were seven for 21, but the team struggled to make shots. It was the defense that turned this game into a landslide. You ain't have to say I shot that bad. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, definitely in a, a good win for us and good win for me, Caleb, and PJ going home and getting the W. Uh, we got all our families and friends here, so it's just good to, good to get that win in front of my people. Bam, what happened at halftime where you came out, you, you blitzed them 35 to 8 in that third quarter. The defense just, you know, ramped up to such a, a high level. What, what what happened at halftime? What kind of adjustments, if any, did you make? We just knew we had to lock down the paint. I mean, they were getting easy layups in the first half, getting open shots. And they weren't really filling our defense. So we had to go out there in the second half and, uh, and play harder, in my opinion. Bam, how good does it feel now that Kyle Lowry is, is back? There's your super six six starter, Tyler Hero. Uh -huh. But but you're beginning to get the whole band back together one step at a time, but it's got to feel good to have your starting group back intact. Yeah, man, it feels great. We got Kyle back. You know, he's facilitating, he's operating, and uh, he's getting us in the easy sets, getting us easy baskets, me and Jimmy. So, you know, we're happy to have him back. Bam, we are enjoying your victory tour. You, you you win and have a great game in San Antonio in front of Coach Pop, who you won a gold medal with, and now you come to your home state and get another impressive win. And Bam, it's so much fun to watch you and, and Jimmy Butler lead this team, two of the most unselfish stars we have had the pleasure to watch. Appreciate it. You see a 35A third quarter. Just what, what stood out to you as you as you witnessed it on the sideline? Uh, you know yeah, we, we weren't necessarily expecting that, um, but uh, defensively, uh, that clearly set the tone uh, that quarter. Um, and I thought the guys were uh, pretty active uh, and, and making it tough. And then, it, you know, it always becomes make or miss. They also missed some, and some of them were open that they missed. Uh, and then on the other end, um, just a continuation of what we saw in San Antonio. The ball was really moving. It was finding the open guy. Uh, guys didn't really care, you know, necessarily who was shooting. It was just as long as the guy was open uh, and working together, you know, to move uh, their bodies and the ball, you know, to find that open guy. That, that was uh, inspiring to see. The way Bam is able to fight through frustration he might feel from a 3-for-13 first half to contribute in so many ways. It shows the maturity we've seen in his game over yeah. a number of years, right? Yeah, you know, he really made some nice plays in that third quarter on both ends of the court. You know, uh, they're a very uh, difficult team to, to defend. You know, they play w with incredible pace. Uh, they really do a good job of moving the ball and driving it. Uh, so they put pressure on your second line of, of defense. Uh, so you need guys that can contain the ball, uh, and Bam, you know, really uh, helps in, in that regard. Uh, and then, you know, he was just uh, finding the ball in the middle of the paint uh, and making the appropriate plays, uh, you know, whether he's playmaking, find the open uh, shooter, or, you know, getting all the way to, uh, to the basket. And one other thing for me, just Lowry, the calming effect you've talked about, two consecutive uh, third quarters yeah. where you all play well collectively. That's phenomenal. Um, uh you know, probably the only people that really, really, truly understand are, are people on the sideline. Uh, and uh, you hear that expression all the time, uh, like having an extension of a, a coach on the floor. He's the epitome of that. You know, he just, he can control the game uh, and control the pace, get the ball where it needs to go, make the appropriate calls, uh, feel the tenor of the game and what, what's needed whether that's uh, knocking down a big shot or just playmaking. Uh, and that's from years and years of experience of, of doing it at an extremely high level. How much do games like this help where you know, you're able to rotate some more guys in, you know, get out to that big lead early or in the third quarter and kind of just rotate some more guys in and get some players some rest? Yeah, we're not even thinking about that, you know, right now. Uh, we're just going to forge ahead. Uh, we'll rest during All-Star break. Um, you know, it's nice to be able to play those guys. Uh, our depth is is something we think is a strength, um, so we want to utilize it. Uh, 
and uh, you know I'm sure it was it was good for Jimmy and uh, PJ you know to play a few a few less minutes tonight. How much progress you know just game to game have you seen from Kyle you know play a little bit more tonight uh, play he played a little bit better tonight than he did in San Antonio. Yeah, I, it's not even something I'm thinking about at all. You know, it, he'll fi- he figures it out always. So that's what he does. Uh, um, and regardless, uh, I didn't even look at the stat line. I, I never do with him. It, it, it's the effect that, the magnifying effect, uh, multiplying effect that he has on everybody else. And that's part of, you know, his greatness. Maddox? I will take one from Zoom. Cooper, go ahead. So, uh, maybe you touched about, uh, a little bit with, with what you were saying about Kyle, but the two sixteen from three in the first half, the offense wasn't really looking pretty. A lot of teams find themselves down 10, 15, whatever, with that kind of an offensive half. What separates this team from maybe others you've had in their ability to keep themselves in the conversation, hang around, despite the offense not really falling apart? But... Yeah, we have a lot of uh, really competitive veteran players uh, that know how to to work a game uh, so they're not um, you know getting sick at sea you know over a 8 run from another opponent they understand that games are long and you have to you know really work the, the game and, and try to get control of the game um, and we have a few of those guys that understand that it's really hard for young players coming in uh, to really understand that because you hear so much stuff about how many points do you score? You know, all the stats that everybody wants to, to celebrate. We have, you know, some old school veterans that uh, don't even really care about that. It's, it's about competing and working the game, getting control of the game, uh, doing it on both ends of the court. Uh, you know, I thought our, our shots in the first half were, were pretty good. You know, we had a lot of open looks and some of those threes that we made in that third quarter, we had those kind of looks in the, in the second quarter. We just missed them. Um, our defense was pretty solid in the first half. We just needed uh, to take it to another level. And fortunately, we were able to do that uh, in the third quarter, and we were able to knock down some shots uh, as well. All right, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Thank you. This team that allows you to be able to survive difficult, frustrating first halves when you, maybe you don't shoot as well as you do as a team and then come out and play like you did in the third quarter. Uh, just... I think our resilience, you know, we got a bunch of guys on this team that can, you know, uh, score in bunches. Um, guys who can, you know, ignite us, guys who can get hot, you know, really fast. And uh, I think you've seen a little bit of that in the second half as a team. We, you know, got stops on defense and then we were able to um, run and, you know, push the lead, which, um, you know, we were able to separate um, from them. What Bam's able to do, even on a night maybe struggling from the field to help in so many areas and keep at it, I'm, I imagine that's something you would uh, admire. No? Oh yeah, Bam can, you know, impact the game in so many different ways. I, I don't, we don't really notice, you know, when he's missing shots. You know, I didn't know he went whatever he went, seven for 21. Like the impact he had on the game was much more than the seven for 21. And I think that's the biggest takeaway from how Bam, you know, impacts this team. What was, the, what was the biggest difference that you saw really between the second quarter and the rest of the game? Because even the first quarter was pretty solid, just because that's a weird second quarter. Uh, yeah, I think they were just, we were sparring, sparring with them. You know, we would score, they would score. Um, they would get a stop and score, then we would come down and score. So really just going back and forth. And I think, you know, in that third, really the, the rest of the three quarters, like you said, we were able to get stops, um, more stops than them, and then turn those into transition opportunities. And we were able to generate good looks. How much does it help to have games like this where you, know, you pull ahead by a bunch in the third quarter and then you guys are able to rotate more players in, get some players some rest and stuff? I mean, how much does it help to have games like this when you're in the middle of a longer road trip? Yeah, it's huge. You know, we were able to keep, you know, our veteran guys really out of, of the fourth quarter, which is, you know, I know they appreciate that, um, being able to sit in the fourth. And, um, you know, like you said, on a long road trip like this, you know, anytime we can, you know, sit some guys for, for a quarter or two, whatever it may be, is, is big for us. Your ability to stick with it, even after a first half, and your shots, you know, weren't going ones you typically make in the basket area. Is that a maturity that you've gained over the last couple of years? Or do you think you've always had that where even if you're struggling from the field, you still can do so many things, fight through and keep shooting, keep making an impact? That's, that's definitely maturity. I will say growing as a, as a player and as a guy who wants to be, you know, great in this league <clears throat> has been one of the
of the I feel like biggest downfalls in my in my career. Like I'll stop shooting. But uh you know it's, it's been one of those games where Sasha's short and it looked like it's going in, it just don't. I had a lot of uh in and outs, but teammates kept kept finding me and uh you know, they was giving me a little more love because I'm at home. <laughs> You, you always know how to make the right play. Tonight it was off in shooting. You tied your career high with 21 field goal attempts. Had you known that? And and is there ever any doubt about continuing to shoot on nights where it's not going your way? Yeah. I mean, my teammates look look for me to score. They look for me to be aggressive. So that's the that's the big idea to shoot the ball. Uh, you know, <clears throat> me and Jimmy and Tyler are probably going to take most of the shots. So. That's why we have we have Cal. How much does it help, you know, during a longer road trip like this, to kind of be able to, you know, sit down for most of the fourth quarter after you got Jacks on a big lead like that? It's great. We get to rest our bodies. And uh, when's our next game? The seventh? Monday against what? Monday. So, uh, yeah, good quality rest we got. And on to the next one. You need those type of games when it's an 82-game season, so. Two straight third quarters.